Hi there, it's Mr. Robster. Today we're going to talk about Euler's method. And Euler's method, there's their formula in the formula booklet. But what Euler's method does is it takes a differential equation with an initial value and it asks us to find for this function y that exists, what is the y value going to be when x equals 3, when we're only given the derivative. And if you think historically, we didn't have fancy technology to be able to calculate this with slope fields uh, technologically, but we could do it analytically. And so mathematicians over the years have devised really clever ways to get super estimates when they were unable to actually calculate the, the solutions to these differential equations. And so we're going to go through the Euler's method process using a step 0 0.2, and we're going to try and find when x equals 3. And so what Euler was able to do, he was able to sketch the solution curve to the differential equation. And he was even able to make the slope fields that goes with it. And he could go, oh, look and see the value when x equals 3, the value is going to be 4 point something. But his technique got, gets even better. And what he does is he started with this point here, 2, 0. And he came along and he found the slope of that line here. He found the slope of that line. He found the actual equation of the slope is just going to come from the derivative. And that was going to be, of this point here, is going to be 2, because the derivative is x plus y is what the derivative is equal to. And so it's going to be 2. And so then he found the equation of the line, which was y minus 0 was equal to 2x minus 2, which ended up being y is equal to 2x minus 4. So that was the line here. And so then what he did is he wanted to find this particular value. Let's go over 2.0.2. So he wanted to know when the x value, he used the x value of 2.2, plugged it into the equation, 2 times 2.2 minus 4, and he ended up getting 0 0.4 when he did it. So he knew the y value here. This was 2.2 and comma 0 0.4. Well, now that he had this, he came along and he then made, found the slope at this particular point because he had the idea of the slope field and this uh, differential is true for anything here. So he found the slope here and then he made a new line. He went over 2.2 and then he went up to this value and he then found the slope of that line. Went over 0.2 and up and then he went along and he found the slope for that line, and so on, and he went up and over, and so on and so forth. And eventually he got to the point where he could find when x was equal to 3, when he did enough of these. And so his estimate, he would get an estimate for when x equal to 3 that kept getting pretty, pretty close to the actual one using this idea of an iterative process of multiple slopes over and over again. But he would have to find the slope of the blue line, and then the slope of the purple line, and the slope of the red line, and the black line, and so on and so forth. So you need to find, you would always need the previous one. And so what he did to generalize it, he knew that he was always going to find the slope, right? And I know the slope, I'm going to take, if I generalize this, let me say that this point here is, we'll call this, x0, y0, and this will be like x1, y1. And so the slope would be y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. And we know that that was going to be the slope of the line. Well, the slope was simply the derivative at that point. And I'm going to use this notation here, I'm going to say f at x0, comma y0. And that's the derivative at the point x0, y0. Well, I also know that this part here is simply the increased step of 0 0.2. Okay? And that is what we are calling h. h is what we call h. Well, if I do a little algebra, I'm just going to multiply by h. y1 minus y0 is equal to h, f 
of the slope at the point x0, y0, multiplied by h, and then y1 is simply I add the y0 over, which I know y0, because in that case it's the 2, it's where the slope comes from. I do not know what this y1 would be. I would know the x1, but not the y1. So y1 will be y0 plus h f of the x0, y0. And so this here is just a formula that will get me y1. Well, but as soon as I have y1, I also have x1, and I can then do y2 would just be whatever y1 was, which I just calculated, plus h of f of the x1, y1. And x1 would just be the x0 plus 0, the h value. And then y3 would simply be y2 plus h times the derivative, uh, the x2, y2 point, and so on and so forth. And so we generalize it as shown here in Euler's formula. Okay, h is the step length, x is n plus 1 is, each, is x n plus h each time, and this is just the formula of the slope rearranged where this is the derivative at the point, this is the step, and this is the y value of the point that we know. And that's the premise behind Euler's method. It uses the idea that we know the slope at any given point on this entire Cartesian coordinate plane, which is the premise of a slope field. And we can do it to find, or to find a really good approximation of the true value. And that's the concept behind Euler's method.